AEW Collision is in the books. Uh, I said that like it was some sort of a pay-per-view event of any sorts. No, it was just a regular show. It had a lot of matches. It had a lot of... <sighs> Can I share something with you guys? It's a dirty confession. As a reviewer, as a person who makes videos about wrestling and wrestling shows, I should not express my opinion in that way, but I don't enjoy AEW that much. And the reason is that the stories are not there. There are a ton of matches on Rampage, ton of matches on Collision, but when I jump into it, you're gonna see what is actually my problem. There are a lot of matches that are just put together last second without any story behind it or any sense behind it. So let's just jump into it. The first match of the night was the FTR versus Big Bill and Ricky Starks. And believe it or not, Big Bill and Ricky Starks won the World Tag Team Championships from FTR. The guys who had a match with the Young Bucks and lost on the grandest stage of them all, all in, lost the World Tag Team Champions to guys that what was the whole story behind all of this? So much confusion going in. In the next match as well, Brian Danielson versus Kyle Fletcher. How that happened? How that was built up? Kyle Fletcher is a part of the Don Callis family. Daniel Bryan had a banger of matches. Yeah, one-time one matches with random people. But all of a sudden, that match appeared out of nowhere. And yeah, I like the finish of Brian Danielson because I see it for the first time. It, it was kind of a surprise roll-up, but it was kind of different and I like how it looks, but I didn't like that the build-up was literally the start of the show and nothing else. Another one, Bullet Club Gold versus three random guys that I see for the first time that I can't even remember their names. Look guys, I don't want to disrespect anyone, but try to build a story with the things you have, you know? Maybe I'm not the guy who, who you want to listen to advice to, but for example, the Don Callis family and Jericho and uh, Kenny Omega, they're having a story there and if you want to build that Brian Danielson bridge, maybe involve the Blackpool Combat Club in Jericho and Kenny Omega's business. I don't know. Something. Uh, by the way, Colton Gunn is a star. He's looking like a star. He's looking like a million bucks. And that's solely, solely on how he looks. I, I don't even know his moveset, but Juice Robinson is having a cool moveset and he looks like a freak and I freaking love him. I like the whole Bang Bang Gang. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen with MJF versus Switchblade. Oh, it was actually at full gear, yeah. Another random match, Iron Savages versus The Acclaimed. We all knew that The Acclaimed is gonna win. They're the trios champ. Every week they're coming out and they're saying that we're champs for 41 days. Next week, we're champs for 48 days. Next week, we're champs for whatever days. Maybe this is the way of people remembering that they're actually trios championships because are there, there are a lot of opponents for them to contend for this championship, to challenge for these championships. Maybe the death triangle at some point when Pack returns. Well, what is happening with House of Black? They just disappeared, like the Acclaim just deleted them. Well, what is going on there? After that, I saw the most absurd thing because Timeless Tony Storm had a match with Kara Hogan and Tony Storm's finisher was to eat Hogan's ass. And that way she distracted her or I don't know what happened there, but after that she did her finisher and Timeless Tony Storm won. A lot of confusion. Good match was Commander versus Eddie Kingston. Commander won uh, a mini tournament in order to get to... It was not a tournament, it was just a match. 
in order to get to Kingston and it was a good match. Kingston gave everything he had, Commander got everything he had. There was not really a build up there or a story there, but I, I liked that there was something going on there and it made sense. And yeah, Kingston retained, which was obvious of course, because he just won the title, but I liked it and I liked the match and everything. And that was actually a good thing. Another good thing, the last bit with Edge trying to understand what is happening, why Christian Cage refused to team up with him and why basically he attacked him because at the end of the day Edge did everything so that he can team up with Christian and at the end Christian said I'm not gonna give you the answer tonight, I'm gonna give you the answer on Tuesday if you survive and he sent Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne to attack Edge. By the way, Luchasaurus rocks and they attack Edge. After that, Darby Allen came out to save Edge, but Darby Allen got wrecked by Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne. That was it. The next thing we're gonna see is probably the Tuesday Night Wars, as they say it. NXT versus AEW once again. I'm really excited because NXT is bringing John Cena, Paul Heyman, Becky Lynch, Cody Rhodes, and uh, AEW is having now Edge. That's it, and uh, MJF, and um, and there is a match between Switchblade and uh, Hangman Adam Page, which is having a zero build-up as well. And I don't want any of the AEW fans to think that I'm hating AEW or anything. I, I'm just saying, start thinking a little bit of a long term, because it's a little bit ridiculous just random matches out there and I know that this is the wrestling promotion right and the goal is to have wrestling matches but I cannot really watch a wrestling match without any build-up just for the sake of watching wrestling it's it just, it just doesn't make any sense why two or more people are just fighting without any reason it's just like going out on the street and just seeing two people mauling each other. It just doesn't make any sense. Probably people on the street have more story than the matches in AEW. Sorry, it's it, it just the way it is. I'm, I'm really sorry to say it. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Peace.